The Menace Tech Show. Welcome to the Menace Tech Show, a show for HVAC professionals by HVAC professionals. The Menace Tech Show. So what, what, what's that dish you were telling me about earlier? The gyro? Okay, so I would say, yeah, that would be my favorite. When I went back to Greece last time, I ended up just eating so many of those, at least one a day. But it's not really called the gyro. No. So in Greece, we call them souvlaki. That's the real name. Souvlaki. There you go. Yeah. Or you could say gyro. Like gyro. Either, either one works. G-Y-R-O. Right? Yeah, G-Y-R-O. Gyro. Yeah. Gyro. Gyro. Yeah. Because the G in, in Greek is, is like a, a, yeah, like a, a Y. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And tell us, other than the meat, what, what do you put in it? All right. So the pita, is be, uh, the bread, or in other, in other words, better. And um, the meat is not that processed meat where it's like a big cone. It's, oh, sorry. It's chunks and chunks of meat, like uh, all squished together. And they use, they don't just cut off slices. They use this little machine that spins, got little teeth on it. And it just pulls off these itty bitty chunks of meat all over, oh, wow. right? And they fill how, it up. How was that? How was that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, did you like that? Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Let's, is, are we talking lamb? Now? Are we talking cool. lamb or pork? It's a beef effect. lamb pork mix. Beef oh, lamb so, pork yeah, yeah, yeah. mix. Yeah. So it's, it's like all a three. Like nice that, little like, a, like a little happy trio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, meat lovers uh, delight for sure, right? Okay, so, that's me. Yeah, and then I put the tzatziki I'm a meat on lover. it, which is all tzatziki. mostly handmade. Yeah, right. And it's this yummy yogurt. If you've never had it before, cucumber based. Um, it's hard to explain, but it's got this sweet, nice taste to it. Anyway, not it's got some dill. It's got some dill in it. Yes, it's very good. I'm yeah. not. I'm not really a, a sauce, creamy sauce kind of guy, but it is good. Me neither. I, it, like I hate mayonnaise and yogurt. Is it a yoga? It's a yoga sauce, all right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Generally, I don't yeah. like yogurt type. You know, like you said, but this is the exception. I love this stuff. And my wife too. She didn't like it at first. She's like, I don't like that. It doesn't look good. I'm gonna try it. So Ended up eating the whole thing. So we it. got beef, pork, and lamb. We mm-hmm. got tzatziki on on the right kind of bread. Yep, and then they put they uh, they give you shave. They don't put you little chunks of onions right in there that fall all over the place right. like they do here. They give these nice shaved long pieces of onions, real thin, mm. shaved right. And then same with tomatoes, little tiny tomato pieces, right. And then they put French fries on top of all of it. It holds all the sauce and tomato juice and everything in there, so you're not making a mess, right. And then you've just got this nice little package of just deliciousness. I mean, you can't eat too many of them, right. You get a heart attack eventually, but. Absolutely delicious. Did you bring well, any samples? As, <laughs> Did I, bring, I wish I could. Oh, I wish yeah. you would have. Listen, no, and this is authentic. Eat, talk, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can't eat too many, but you have a high. We attack. will. We yeah. please take a look at this table. Yeah. And, and, and now, see how are you that, so skinny? <laughs> That's a good question. Why, why are fish skinny? Because they eat fish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, so there's another dish, another Greek dish that um, my wife likes, and I forget what it's called, but it's got eggplant and it's layered. You know. Yeah, moussaka. Moussaka. Yeah. Well, isn't Moussaka, Moussaka. isn't Moussaka the king of the lemurs from Madagascar? Uh, it sounds like it is. Moussaka. Okay. <laughs> uh, I named him after this food. But I thought yeah, that I'm was not a town of upstate New York. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of eggplant. My wife loves it, but she raves about that dish because there's a couple of Greek restaurants. And you know, you know, what you were talking about is different than what I'm used to. And a few episodes ago, I can a few, a couple of months ago, we were talking about a Greek festival that I, I, my wife and I went to. And mm-hmm. What you're describing, the gyro, is a little bit different than what I saw. So you were yeah. talking about authentic, yes. actually, in Greece. The original, yeah. Oh, wow. And I love Greek salads. Yeah. They are olives. awesome. Anything with olives and olive yes. oil. And oh, I love yeah. that tzatziki. How about tahini? Are you big in tahini? Tahini, is that, I don't even know what that is. No, you don't know what that is? So that's not a Greek thing. I might be more of a Middle Eastern yeah. than Greek yeah, Paul, thing, just keep it. We'll yeah, edit that out. Once you I don't look awful, like an idiot. You've gone too far east. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take much for you to yeah, look yeah. like that's what there's a, All I have to do is open my mouth. Yeah, you know? All right. So uh, welcome yeah. to the Metas Tech Show. Good, because we that are, conversation was deteriorating. Uh, uh, yeah. We are here at the Diamond Contractor Community <laughs> Summit. So mm-hmm. we're here with Roland and uh, Paul Javes. Chavs. Chavs or Chavez at Chavez. the hotel. And a, and a bunch of contractors. And contractors. contractors. And uh, my name is Juan. Juan. And then we are with Harry. Uh, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. You don't want to try that last name? No, Zaimis. Easy. I was hoping he would try it. Zaimis or Zaimis. Actually, he said it right the first time. Zaimis. It's supposed Zaimis. to be three syllables. See, yeah. Zaimis. Well, yeah. Zaimis. Yeah, what Greek word doesn't have three syllables? Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. 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 <laughs> Go ahead, Harry. Oh, so yeah, um, I guess do a little introduction. Yeah, My name is Harry Zaimis. So in English, you just say Zaimis to keep it simple, right. but it is Zaimis. That's the correct way, technically. Um, the controls product manager, technically associate product manager um, for 
Let's see. Oh, for all controllers, remote controllers, hardware, CN105 devices, anything that connects to TB15, so MA controllers, um, all of those. No, so, for Mitsubishi Electric Train US yeah. or Metis, that's why you're for Metis, Metis. Yes, yes. Okay, thank let's you. get that clear. So yeah. you're one of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free to clear me up here anytime. Yeah, that's I'll okay. We better. will. We will. Oh. All right. <laughs> no doubt about that. Yeah, and we brought you on to talk about dry mode. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about traditional dry mode because if if you were talking about dry mode five, six, ten years ago, it's a little bit different than dry mode now, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So tell us a written. Let's go back in time. Let's say five years. Tell us how dry mode works. Okay. So for the most part, or for most models, dry mode simply, it looks at the set point. It looks at the room temperature. And I believe it has a four degree overshoot allowance. And what it'll do is simply just overcool. So it's very rudimentary. So that's how the original dry mode was, except without the option for, you know, how much do you want to overshoot? No, no. Is that, is that differential? Is that adjustable? Can you do it? To two degrees. So or? if we're still back in time, no. Back in you, time. No, okay, let's back, still back in time. Yeah, no. nothing it's can be locked in. Yep. Yeah. And so let's let's keep it simple for a second. So I've I've got a let's just say I've I've got a mini split, a one to one. Mm -hmm. All right. And I hit dry mode on my remote controller. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the unit doing? So we're not we're not maintaining temperature technically. Mm -hmm. Right. We just want to remove more humidity. We're more concerned with that than we are with, mm -hmm. with temperature. So yeah. how, what is the equipment doing? So this is the difference between, you know, conventional systems with 24-volt stats is that we actually ramp the compressor down. Or I'm ramp the compressor up. Sorry, I got it backwards there. So medium high speed, and then we ramp the indoor fan down. And so what we're doing is we're putting out less CFM, right? And so therefore less BTU exchange and more dehumidification. So Allowing just, the coil to get colder. Yes, we're yeah, we're getting the coil as cold as possible and dripping as much as we can into the pan. A cold coil with air going over it slower is going to remove more humidity. Absolutely, mm -hmm. latent heat, and then to an extent, that's assuming that the the house is already somewhat balanced, right? That the system Correct. sized correctly. Because if you've just got, I mean, if you're eighty percent plus humidity and it's just thick clouds of moisture, dry mode's not going to do it. At that point, you need you know something big to push everything, right. and break it up, right? But for a standard, just like, oh, I left my door open for 20 minutes, and now right. the house is a little muggy, right. that's where dry mode shines. Yeah, so it's I'm from up in New England, as, as if anybody listens to the show, I think they know that. But it reminds me of the time of year, like in, in the early summer, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a day when it's 70 degrees outside, but it's humid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, turning mm -hmm. on the air conditioning doesn't really make sense. Setting it down to 67 doesn't really make sense. So mm -hmm. dry mode is, I think, when it comes in the most handy there. Yes. All right. So does that compressor... You know, it's it's ramping down. I mean, it's ramping up. Actually, I made the same mistake you did. The compressor is ramping up. The motor is ramping down. Mm -hmm. What determines how long that compressor runs that way, or the system runs that way? So, well, that goes back. So, if we're still back in time, yeah, 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 back in time. Differential between the set point and the room temperature. So, for most models, it's four degrees, right? Once you hit that four degree mark. So, if the original set point was seventy, when you hit dry mode, it's going to go down to sixty six, for example, okay. right? Or sixty five, you know, if you're unlucky. So let me jump in here because I'm from north of the world, but I live in Florida now. And um, I have a lot of discussion with students about dry mode. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that I hear often that they say is that they'll sit down and they'll actually print up a little piece of paper for the customer. Just explain, explain that if they do go in dry mode to set that controller, our, not a controller, to set that controller at like 80 to 82 with yeah. that four degree differential. So that way when they come home, that house is not at 72 degrees or trying to get there all day long. Yeah. And of, of course, this all depends on the house, how tight it is, how, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of variables here. There's a lot of variables, but most of the time on the newer tight houses, my students say that the customer loves that once they know how it works. Yeah. Okay. Now that's a little bit, Years ago, because we're mm -hmm. talking, you know, down the road, and then now it comes into the to the new yeah, dry let's, mode. Let's not yeah. just go into the current. Time. Let's stay yes. in the yes, back. Let's, let's stay in the okay. past for a second. So that compressor does that compressor actually shut off, or is it running the whole time until it achieves that differential? No, it shuts off. It shuts off. So it there's shuts a, off there's and a it lets cycle. The indoor time. fan dry off the coil for a little bit. All right, and the, and there's a period of time that there's an off mm -hmm. cycle and an on cycle. Yep, and that's going to vary, right? Yeah. 
And so with, that's the clever strategy and the best strategy, by the way, doing the 80 degree thing in dry mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you do 70 or 67 or something, then eventually yeah. you'll hit dew point inside and the plastic will start dripping. Yeah, so that's another <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, you, I don't know, Juan, you got to say something, but hold yeah, on a second. But, that. but that's another thing I've heard contractors say is you don't have a set point in dry mode, but we do. Well, we did. We do. We have a range of set yeah. points. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So while in dry mode, the system stays in that dry mode mode it doesn't go back to comfort cooling back in time no not yet, no okay. okay it didn't all right so it's always dry mode it's always going to maintain right. that four That's degree it used to yeah, be last command wins right. still okay. right. right yeah so, so one, if that temperature rises in there it's not going to kick over in the air conditioning it's going to go to dry mode it stay there you got to physically put it into okay. air conditioning. and that's why Take i was it. cleaning up right. the air right. on that. you cleaned it up good though. all right Thank so you. one more question while we're still in the past all right that's a one to one, an M or P series one to one in dry mode. But what if, how different does it behave in like with a multi zone or even on a city multi system where you could have multiple indoor units in, in dry mode? Is that compressor still going to shut off? Well, no, it's not going to shut off if other units are still calling, but it will behave slightly differently. It'll be a little less accurate because, because the branch box would have to, you know, um, or distribute the refrigerant. And so in doing so, the branch box might not do it as well as a one-to-one would, right? Right, but now it's the LEVs that are doing the yes. opening and closing rather than the compressor doing the yeah. on and off cycles. It's okay. just adding another component in the mix, right? And there's always room for error when right, you add right. more things. Okay. All right, so let's come into the current okay. current equipment now. And let's, go, let's stick with the one-to-one system, how, it, how dry mode works currently. Bring, walk us through that. Okay, so currently, uh, I've got actually got two updates, but currently we, so we have auto-dry. And so auto-dry is essentially turning the thermostat into a uh, humidistat, you could say, right, per se. Right. So what we do is with auto-dry, and this works both in the SDW and in Kumo Cloud, you can select a humidity set point between 35 and 75%, um, and you can also select an overcool and undercool threshold. So um, overcool typically is the number one, right? The majority of cases. Yes. But some people might have an issue where the temperature uh, goes up, for example, right? And they're still wanting to dehumidify. So there's all sorts of cases. Anyway, you get a two to four degree thresholds there. And the point is, is that you set that and you forget it. And then whenever you're running in cool, it automatically switches to dry mode when your humidity falls or rises above a certain amount. Okay. So it's all automatic. Once you set your settings and your parameters, you don't ever have to touch it again. And it'll tell you when it's not, uh, dry or auto dry is on. And right. Kumo auto dry will pop up on the SDW. It'll go auto dry and the screen will turn teal instead of blue. So it, you know, mm, gives you a lot nice. of, yeah. And it shows you humidity percentage where right. your target is and where you are right now. And, and it has a little, yeah, little wave. That to was show. a nice update too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're more comfortable removing humidity than lowering the temperature sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. But, yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's where it helps a lot. And auto dry helps a lot because it's not going to have you overshooting four degrees, five degrees, like right. the old one, you know, like it used to. And you don't have to go and switch the mode manually. That's right. the biggest thing is nobody, most people aren't going to remember to come back and put it into cool mode. So I'm actually glad that auto dry happened. David Bourbon and I, um, and he's not with us anymore on uh, the company. I mean, but um, he and I had worked on this years ago and he had asked me, he said, what's the most important thing I could do right now? This is three or four years ago. And I said, automatic dehumidification so you've got a humidity sensor in this thing let's use it and so he eventually he got it where he pushed it through and here we are wow, so we've got right. auto dry yeah so yeah, yeah. thanks guy <laughs> yeah. yeah we talked about in our class at the dsg conference about that because that we used a new controller right and it was it was fascinating you know really to see the changes that they made to that yeah and i mean from the old version to the new version it's a difference night and day <laughs> yeah, yeah it gives the customer it's wise. a better option absolutely for, for the end user so, so then there's a new, new dry mode. A new, new dry mode. Yeah, yeah. So, so auto, auto dry just utilizes the built-in logic, right? What's mm-hmm. already in the indoor unit, and it just controls it instead of just letting it run rampant. So the new logic, though, for the GS, uh, it's either, no, maybe not the GS, maybe the FW. You'd have to ask Matul. Don't take my word for it on this yet, right? <laughs> but one of them coming out is going to have a new dry mode in, uh, algorithm in it. And so the factory even showed us, you know, a bunch of charts and everything showing that, I mean, it's, it's three, four times better than the current algorithm, right? It's just a significant difference. Uh, Matul showed me all this, and this is months ago. That's why I don't remember well enough to right, right. the details. But yeah, so that's going to be uh, coming out. And so when that comes out, then auto dry is going to work even better. 
it, it's going to be you know way more to the customer's liking much less of a chance of hitting dew point if you set it too cold you know or yeah. just uh you know r- being too inefficient because that's another thing when you're running in dry mode you're not exactly efficient right because you're right. not moving btus right, right. you're just ramping right. that compressor up so it's like pushing the pedal but you're not going anywhere right. <laughs> so anyway that's something to consider but awesome. yeah that's that's something exciting that's going to happen you well, know, good. It's be much more accurate. so in this scenario, if I heard you correctly, mm-hmm. uh, compared to the old um, uh, operational uh, logic, this one, when is on dry mode, mm-hmm. it it does look also at set point and room temperature. Yes. So it's also going to provide comfort cooling mm-hmm. as well. So, so, another, so yeah, if you set it to two degrees over and under, and then it's, you know you set your set point to seventy two. If it hits 70, it's going to go back to regular, or I mean, I'm sorry, if it hits at 74, it's going to go back to regular cooling. And if it hits 70, um, you know, and then goes into auto dry again, right. if it hits 70, it'll go back to cooling again, right? It, so it just keeps back that's and cool. forth, back right, and forth. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I'm that's good. Forward. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Uh, Roland, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, it's just a uh, it's fascinating technology. Yes. And I, you know, like I said, at the DSC conference with the new controller, I had the opportunity to sit down with one of the engineers and, and we actually went through it, you know, more on uh, the engineering side of it. And I was just like, you know, perfect, you know, just, just how they, how they figure things out. And, and that goes back, um, Harry, um, because we know um, that for the system to dehumidify, compressors got to run. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the one-to-one, for instance, Paul, you were mentioned the one-to-one. It is not a dehumidification system; it just does humid dehumidification by overcooling. But now we're doing some dehumidification. Yeah, oh, well, some true well, dehumidification. Well, every refrigeration system dehumidifies it, it does, by default. Yeah. It, but yeah. it's not a dehumidification system. This is just system. controlling right. that dehumidification, right. rather than. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Instead of focusing on temperature we're focusing on humidity, humidity. Right. correct and, yeah. and and adding to the comfort you know which which is that and at the end of the day that's why we're in business is to make people comfortable right right, right. Yeah. Harry, anything else we need to know about dry mode anything we forgot no i think that's really about it i mean on the high level you know not to go too much into detail on anything but yeah that's that's pretty much it i mean yeah. one thing that i was going to propose or thinking about just in my head as an idea um, as using auto dry as a staging mechanism uh, for actual dehumidification. So you live in Florida, let's say, and you have a dehumidifier. You don't want to run your dehumidifier all the time because that's more expensive than running, you know, because you're running that fan at high speed, mm-hmm. right? So um, I was actually thinking of maybe incorporating some type of, and I haven't actually done the work on this, just an idea, but, um, you know, making it to where auto dry comes on first, right? And then if, you know, 20, 30 minutes go by and auto dry can't do it, Kick on dehumidifier, kind of like a backup almost, right? Or if you hit your two degree threshold, right? Wow. And you're Auxiliary over, instead dehumidifier. of overcooling more, once you hit that threshold, go back to cool, right. stop the compressor, kick on the dehumidifier, and just keep running the fan. Well, then why why, why are you here? Just go make it happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> I need to go make don't, it happen. Don't talk about it. Do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, you know, where I live in Florida, it's, it's not uncommon that, like, you know, Seven out of ten houses has a standalone dehumidifier in the right. in the, in the gr- oh, yeah. we, we yes. call it a great room, but you know a, you know the, the true function of a dehumidifier would reheat coil, but over you know when it's all said and done, a standalone dehumidifier adds heat to the room. Right. Yeah. It, right. It, you know it's that's it. It adds heat to yeah, the room. Yeah, because you got the heat of compression. Sure. Everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. everything. You're not yeah. getting rid of any heat. It's all staying inside. But it is amazing that uh, how many houses do still have those. You know. But you know. Like you just said, auxiliary dehumidification. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Back up, back, like backup people yeah, for yeah, cooling. Yeah. And the people in Phoenix are like the, listening to this, going, "What are they talking about?" Well, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know well, strange words. Well, they've single digits, <laughs> single digits in the summertime out there. Yeah. But now I can see Kumo Cloud and Kumo Station working with that pretty good too. Yes. You know, so, yeah. yeah. And with the new SRW and all of that coming out, I don't know if I should go into that on this. No, but. Do whatever you want. Anyway, you know, you guys know the, about the SRW? Are you familiar? Yep. No. So yep. anyway, yeah, touchscreen, going to have, yeah. so it's going to have four contacts. It's going to have Kumo Station built in, essentially. It's going to have contacts on the back. Yeah. So that's going to make all of this even easier because SRW and SDW, will, awesome. I mean, they'll integrate seamlessly. Right. right. In so, and, and let, so let me ask you a question, just, mm-hmm. just for the heck of it. Um, you know, during, the, during again, back to the uh, DSG conference, um, what do you think the best controller is? What would you prefer? What would you recommend a Best controller for that out of the brands that we... we all the controllers we sell are great. Oh, they are. Yeah. But they're they're all, they are. 
<laughs> but that SDW though, that was whoa, that was well, pretty easy. For, like dehumidification? Yeah. Or oh, yeah. For, for dehumidification, yeah, the SDW. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. the only one that has auto dry. Yeah. So I mean, that right there just puts it into a new bracket. Right. right. And that's a residential controller. Mm-hmm. Not residential or commercial. It can be commercial. Okay. Really it's all more, application. I mean, we designed it really more for multifamily, you know, um, apartments, townhomes, things like that. Oh. A lot of copy paste, you know, so contractors oh, don't have to replace batteries, you know, oh. all the time. But um, it also goes, I mean, for single family homes, perfectly fine. I mean, it's a wired solution for ductless units, right? So there's no, so if you're planning on using a Mac 334 and an MA, bye bye. Bye. Use the SDW. Wow, right? That's, so, a, yeah. that's, a, that's a good financial savings. A lot of niche applications that the MHK2 could not fill right. is where the SDW mm-hmm. is kind of filling in those that's gaps, awesome. right? And then yeah. the SRW is going to come in and kind of just, you know, be the overlay, right? The uh, on top of all of it, right. it's one right. big master controller for all of it. So yeah. I think we're going to have to have you come back at some yes. point and just do an episode on long. SDWs, yeah. And, yeah. you know, and all the different controllers that we have available. Sure, so that'll well, be another episode. I'd love to. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. So, well, we thank you, Harry, for. Uh, spend this time with us, oh. and I still wish you had brought some samples. <laughs> Harry, do you speak Greek? Yes. Okay, why don't you say goodbye in, in Greek? Just goodbye? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's something. So, uh, what is it? Uh, yasas. Yasas. Yeah. Yeah. So, ya yeah is high and yeah. by in Greek. It comes. Yeah. It stems from ancient Greek, iya, which yeah. is health. So, basically, the, the way they used right. to say high and by was like, I wish you good health. Like, you know, that was the way they used to greet each other, to good health. Like as, uh, So, anyway... That's what put the history on there. I'm on a podcast. I'm going to talk good. about this. Nice. 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 I love it. I love it. Well, you know, we, we Hispanic, we just say adios. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So. Uh, I'll tell you what people tell me. Okay. Thanks again. Right. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you for listening. Hasta la vista. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs>